Hello there, it's Bibi Cameron here, and this is my first video for Knit and Tangle. I'm super excited to be able to share with you a couple of techniques using beautiful Knit and Tangle supplies. And today, I'm going to be using this background die here called Modern Triangle Cover Plate. It is just perfect to do a wide variety of things, but today I want to show you how to alter the size of the final die cut using this die achieving always a perfect geometrical pattern. I'm also going to share a very easy watercolor technique and I'm going to put all together on a project. This project is a box that can be used as a goodie bag, a paper lantern, a gift box, a light box, or a box to put anything inside really. For this project, I'm going to need three A4 sheets of cardstock. Two of them are going to be used to make the front and the back panel of the box, and the other one is going to be used to make the sides of the box. I'm going to start by cutting the wider panels of the box, which are the front or the back panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the paper at six inches, and I'm going to keep the length of the A4 sheet of cardstock. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this piece of paper, and I'm going to place it on my scoring tool, and I'm going to score at half inch both sides, like that. Then at the other ends of this piece of paper, I'm going to score at two inches three quarters and two inches three quarters again. I'm going to finish by scoring here a line at half inch from that edge. And that scoring line there is going to mark the top of the box. You will see that later. So now I'm going to score the sides of the box. And here I'm going to need a piece of paper that measures three inches, three quarters, or nine and a half centimeters, and is the same length of an A4 sheet of cardstock. Then I'm going to score at half inch from that edge. I'm going to rotate the paper and I'm going to score again at half inch. Then I'm going to rotate the paper and I'm going to score at two inches, three quarters and I'm going to rotate the paper again, and I'm going to score at two inches three quarters. So basically what I did here was scoring the sides of the box in the same way I score the front and the back panel. Here I have the half of the box. To complete the box, I'm going to need another two pieces exactly like these ones here. Now I'm going to die cut the panel, and I'm going to place the die just in the center of those scoring lines there. I hope you can see the scoring lines there and how I'm placing the die. And I'm going to run this through the machine four times, just because I want to make sure that the die is cutting the paper. And then I remove the paper from the die in the die cut with a die brush. Okay, so now let me show you how easy it is to create smaller rectangles using the same cover plate. So I'm going to use a piece of scrapbook paper. This is a six by six sheet of scrapbook paper, and I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to fold this in half, and because I want these pieces to be two inches width, I'm going to score this paper at one inch. I'm going to score the paper just because I want to have a reference where to place the die. So if you see here, I'm scoring that line in the opposite end of the folding, like so. I'm going to die cut this paper. I'm going to place the folding of the paper towards the center of the die cutting plate, and I'm also aligning that scoring line with the edge of that cover plate. And I'm going to run this through the machine. And to do this, I would recommend to use quality scrapbook paper. I tried to do this with four layers of this paper and it works. But when I tried to do it with two layers of cardstock, the die didn't went through the second layer of cardstock. And that's because I have really thick cardstock here in my craft room. So I just have to use whatever I have. And I found this paper suitable to do this. And I don't mind the color of this paper because I'm going to completely change the color of these die cuts. And to do that, I'm going to be using Black Hash Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. And I'm going to be using a makeup sponge 
to apply the color like so. So this was the main idea I wanted to share with you in this video. You can do so many different things with these panels. You can cut them any width you need. A modern triangle cover plate by Neat and Tangle is going to provide always a perfect geometrical pattern that might be different depending the side of the die you use to cut the paper. You can use any of the four edges of the die to alter the size of the final die cut piece. And knowing that, you can produce two identical pieces like these two here. This one here looks different because I cut it with the other edge of the die. Now I'm going to give shape to this box. I'm going to trim the corners of the paper here, like so. These are going to be the flaps of the box, so I don't need those pieces there. And I'm also going to fold all the scoring lines. So this side of the box is done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a piece of vellum. This is a 5 inches by 6 inches piece of vellum. I'm going to leave that there so you can see the size of this piece. And I'm just going to glue that in place. Now I'm going to be using this Nubo glue pen to add glue to the back of this panel and then I'm going to paste this on the vellum. Now I'm going to hand cut the sides of the box to be able to inlay the die as I did with the previous piece. And to give shape to the side of the box, I'm going to trim the four corners in this panel here. You can also snip the paper in those areas there. It's not necessary, you can just completely forget that. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to glue this together. I have finished one half of the box and I need to identify the top of the box, which is this one here, so that I can grab the other half of the box, place them together in the correct orientation with that flap at the top and glue them together. And just to give a nice shape to those flaps, I used a corner punch. This is completely optional, it's not necessary at all. And once I did that, I just paste this together. This is the bottom of the box. And to be able to close and open this box easily, I decided to paste magnets. And I used glossy accents to do that. So I have applied a drop of glossy accents and I just paste the magnet on top like that. So I have four magnets there, they are really small, but they are also very strong. So they are going to keep my box closed. Once the box is finished, it's time to start thinking about how to decorate it. There are so many ways to do it, but today I'm going to be using some of the images of Very Mary stamp set. So I'm going to use Memento Black Ink on Bristol paper. And I'm also going to use my Mini Misty to stamp multiple images at the same time and multiple times. And I'm going to apply a very easy watercolor technique with Nubo brush script pens. They work nicely on this paper and another watercolor papers, but they don't work the same on a smooth cardstock. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply the ink in those areas in which I want it concentrated. And then with the water brush, I'm going to spread the ink towards the center of the image, like so. So I also create like that shadows. And when the first layer of ink dries, I can apply another layer of ink on top and blend again 
and then I get a nice blending and a nice effect on that image. And I'm going to speed the camera and I'm going to play some music as I do the coloring. If the colors all blend together in some point don't be scared to just pass the brush with clear water and lift the color and you will be okay this is a very forgiving watercolor technique so now I'm going to use this dye here it is called seeing stars and I just thought it will add a nice decorative element to the front panel of the box then I'm also going to color these stars using black hash nouveau mousse And to add a little bit of light to the stars, I also use pure platinum mousse. And with the same mousse, I also apply color to a ribbon. I apply a little bit of water and then I crease the ribbon like so, and I'm going to put it to a side to dry. With this and a couple of extra elements, I'm going to be able to finish this project. So I'm going to put some music as I glue everything down. So you can see exactly what I did to get this done. You can see a little bit of the sparkle of the mousse and also how I lay down the images. And I also added a little bit of color here and there after gluing all together. I also add glossy accents to the eyes of the bear and the penguin. These little things really make a big difference. I tried different sentiments and I decided to go with this word Christmas from Berry Mary a stamp set and I fussy cut this work here but I really thought it wasn't working so I decided to cut some letters with journaling alphas dye I color them with nouveau brush script pens and I'm just going to glue them down like so I also like to place a piece of cardstock or paper behind my projects when I'm working with different inks and coloring tools like the mousse because I want to avoid at all costs to get any paint or ink transferred to the back of my projects. I embellish with some sequins from the last release by Knit and Tangle. I'm loving these adhesive foam dots. They really add dimension to your projects. And I'm also using here Nouveau Shimmery Pen. And to finish, I'm going to tie a knot and I'm going to make a bow here at the top of the box just to add another decorative element. So this is the ribbon I just color. I need to make sure that it's completely dry and it's not going to stain the paper. I'm playing with the ribbon until I'm happy with the bow and my box is done. And inside the box I'm placing a mini LED lamp from IKEA. I think they provide a nice and intense light.
So you can use this box as a paper lantern on a table decoration, or just as a gift box to put anything inside. I think this is called in English light boxes as well. And it's a good size box. It measures nine inches by five inches. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you like my project. And do not forget to subscribe to Knit and Tangle channel for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.